April 6th, Monday, Thursday, 2023. Um, <laughs> glad somebody's in favor of it. Great. Um, okay, well, let's uh, begin with, uh, since this focus of this service is on the, the Holy Eucharist, we'll begin with uh, 324 old standard Episcopal Eucharistic hymn. Hymn 324. Hymn 324. Yeah, sorry, sorry. They're both in the same book for me. So. Um, Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descended our full homage to demand king of king yet born of mary as of old on earth he stood lord of lords in human vesture in the body and the blood he will give to all the faithful his own self for heavenly food rank on rank the host of heaven spreads its vanguard on the way as the light of light descendeth from the realms of endless day, that the powers of hell may vanish as the darkness clear away. At his feet the six-winged seraph Cherubim with sleepless eye, veil their faces to the presence, as with ceaseless voice they cry, Alleluia, 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 Lord Most High. Okay, we're on page 274 in the prayer book. The Lord be with you. Let's try that one again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a 
a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. And all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is a portion of Psalm 116. We'll do it by half verse. I love the Lord because God has heard the voice of my supplication. Because I see that my mind is near to me whenever I call upon him. How shall I repay the Lord? For all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death, death of his servants. servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own 
who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that is tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing now, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Jesus said, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but it is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. And after he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now, the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, this is ordinarily the moment we wash feet. But since I got a rather loud, no, we don't, I decided maybe it best not to wash feet. And then I began to think about it and listen to my rationalization. This is pretty good. Um, Jesus says to Peter, you know, if you've had a bath, you're clean. If you've had a bath, you're clean. Now, they washed feet because they lived in the desert. And if you walked in the desert, you were going to get dust on your feet. And so as an act of hospitality, the first thing they would do when they would enter a home would be have their feet washed, usually by a servant or a slave. Um, but it was an act of hospitality. It was an act of welcome. And uh, so uh, what Jesus is doing is an act done by a servant. And he is trying to show us that even though he is their leader, their teacher, and their Lord, their master. He wants them to understand that you serve as a master. Now, anybody who's led anything knows that ultimately there is a certain amount of service in any leadership position, uh, whether you like it or not. Unless, of course, you're a, uh, an authoritarian of some kind. But even authoritarians sometimes have to bend to the will of the 
community. I was thinking uh, of, particularly of Xi Jinping, who's on a number of occasions had to bend to the authority of his people, even though he wanted to do something different. An authoritarian, but you know, you got to read the tea leaves. Uh, just, it's part of the deal. So I thought rather than doing the foot washing thing, which is largely irrelevant to us, since uh, we have our own dust, but it's, it's not from shuffling around in the sand. Um, I thought I would do something a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is give you some flowers. Oh, wow. This is my act of service. Um, it's, uh, and I've got a bunch of different ones. So you can choose if you want. You can choose not to take it, but I'll hit you. <laughs> uh, or like Jesus, I'll yeah. say to Peter, you know, you're really not having a part of me if you're not doing what I ask you to do. So um, I have two of these that have to go. I, uh, I have had a terrible time with ranunculus, which is this baby here. Uh, quite a lovely plant. Yeah, it is. And it should do well, but not by me. <laughs> and then one of my most favorite plants was this uh, cyclamen, which guaranteed would be dead in a week if I had to take it home. Oh, really? So it is not going home with me. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it. I think we just don't like each other, apparently. Although I love it, it's lovely. Yeah. Now, there are other choices. If you're, uh, let's see. I don't care much for them, but uh, <laughs> this is the season of pansies, which will last another three weeks, maybe, until the weather gets too warm for it. Yeah. Uh, but then they come back in the fall. Keep, yeah. up, keep up with it. So I have two two batches of pansies. Oh man, I kind of like the yellow or the, the orange one. Um, but these are pretty too. Yeah. Um, and then for those of you who don't think you have a green thumb, these are begonias, which you almost cannot kill. Yeah. I mean, you you cannot overwater them. They love lots of water. Yeah. And they will grow and grow and grow. I have begonias that are five or six years old at this point um, that go inside and outside depending on the season. And if we're having a bad year, they go outside when they should go in. And you know, <laughs> I try to end some occasionally. <laughs> anyway, um, and then this is, I, I believe, an impatience, probably. Okay, yeah. yeah, an impatience. And um, Dianthus, oh yeah, you know, which are also they're pretty hardy. You can stick them outside, and they, yeah, they they go to town. And for those of you who are gardening already, I'm thinking about keeping the the insects away. There are miracles. So there's a nice variety of things. And I thought I had another. Oh, here it is. This is a bean plant for some of you who can't practically think that you can't do something that's just flowers. <laughs> this actually produces beans, string beans. And then last but hardly least is basil. Love the smell of basil. Okay. So instead of washing your feet as an act of <laughs> hospitality, I have these here. So if you would, one at a time, come forward and make a choice, I will be glad. Somebody will take the, particularly the cyclone. Yeah. Yeah. 
take a whiz at you. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, uh, you know, it's death to this poor thing, you see. <laughs> I will try that. No, you'll try the cyclamen? This way? Whichever one but, you think would. Well, either one. Or it's not it's it's looking at it, it easy. looks like it wants shade more than direct sun. Is that correct? Uh, there's a little thingy here that tells you what to do with it. Yeah, theoretically. Now, that's a, that's impatience. And they do very well outside. Need a lot of water. It's kind of like semi shade. I think. Yeah, and you got You can't you know, find it in bright sunshine. They like shade, so but uh, yeah, you yeah. know, someplace at your new house. Shady plant. I'll put them near your tree. Trust. I'll get mine later. You have such an area. You get it now. <laughs> no, I get it later. Why? I'm getting out of chop down the tree. Why? When I depart your car, I'll get it later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Enter. What do you want? What's your other? I have no idea. The 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 not the shade in the front. So you take, you guys will take, you can take something else too. Either pansy or... Yeah. Basil is this, I love basil. No. I love basil, it's good smell it. It's mm, definitely basil. Oh, cinnamon basil. <laughs> Even better, huh? Yeah. Go, go, go down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, thank you, by the way. Thank You're you. welcome. Yes, You're welcome. Very good Let's see. An yeah. act of hospitality. Yes. We go? You'll have to come and see them. Yes. The governor's here. Yeah. Green beans, marigolds, dianthus, and these are pansies. <laughs> marigolds. Good choice. Yeah. Okay. All right. You got everything else that you can live with, or? Well, I can live with all the rest of it. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, well, let's see. We're going to do John Dianthus here. No, I'll take it. Which of those? Take your pick. They do as well. Okay, that's a Dianthus. That's actually six plants. Yeah. Okay. It's very. So, oh, and we need something for Sandy. Huh? Sandy? Uh, that's fine. Okay. Well, I have no I'll idea on plants. I am totally, completely dumb as a rock. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, that's fine. This will be prettier. That's fine. Okay. The marigolds I like. Uh, All right. Yeah, good. good. Well, I like the smell of them. I love the marigolds. Mm -hmm. oh, I yeah. I do the smell of them. So, and, uh, and even though I realize that give plant giving is often an Easter thing, I thought that. Well, the you know, season's right now, so it's. The it's season is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And, I like this idea. I, I love I, and I like it. Well, as I say, I kept thinking about, you know, this is an act of hospitality he's making here. Yep. And, uh, and why should, you know, why do we have to do this desert hospitality? <laughs> well, we don't live anywhere near the desert. No, you know? no not yet. And, uh, not yet. <laughs> and, uh, might be getting closer. <laughs> Bingo. Let's not, let's not think too long about that one. <laughs> Uh, I always loved it when Californians would come to visit and they'd, they'd come in June or July and they'd say, oh, it's so green here. <laughs> I'd say, well, yeah, it is. It's just sort of the usual. Uh, I lived in Arkansas for a while and Arkansas is sort of Missouri on steroids. <laughs> uh, I mean, it just, stuff just grows like unbelievable, you know. Right. You look at every fence row and they're volunteers all the way down the front fence row and it doesn't make any difference. You can just level those in the spring and by midsummer there are plenty of them. Yeah. Um, it's just wildly, uh, and of course it's, it's humid. <laughs> yeah. Pretty humid. Yeah. Depending on where you live, but I lived in the mountains, well, they call them mountains, in Fayetteville. Uh, <laughs> but they were lovely, and there were lots of green. And, um, and I found out some years ago that I have seasonal affective disorder, which is, uh, <laughs> means that when it gets gray in wintertime, you know, my... my Everything my mood goes down. Thank Everybody you. Everybody does in the yeah. winter time. It's great. It's, it's 
Well, I think, I think there's some Norwegians <laughs> for whom it is not a problem. Yeah, but that's the neat thing about the, the when the spring comes, everything comes to life. That's right. Well, that's the unbelievable that's thing. Is it not amazing? I mean, you know, I have a, a hibiscus. Old yard full of weeds that are coming to life. It had this wonderful run I bought at a suburban lawn and garden, where, which, by the way, is where these came from. So, you know, they're good plants. Um, and it, you know, it's about that tall, I guess. It had these big old floppy violet flowers. It was lovely. And, um, and then I, you know, was I going to just bring it in? Like, well, a lot of times I just bring them in, full plants, and they winter out, they lose a few leaves, and then they then they're off and running the next year. Except that if they're this high, then they're this high, you know, when... <coughs> so I decided, okay, I'm cutting this one back. Chopped it back to about that high and stuck it underneath one of my things that, so it wasn't getting a lot of light. You know, water every month, maybe. Maybe every two weeks. And, um, and then I brought it out about three weeks ago, started watering it, put it in the light, and all these little things have just started coming up, and I thought, this is going to be another great plant, you know, totally renewed by going into dormancy, and probably better for it. I've got one that I've kept going for about seven years, and it has absolutely refused to bloom the last two. So this is its last summer. It's going to get whacked at the end of the summer. Um, maybe even before the summer. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, as I was thinking about Jesus offering his, his servanthood to his disciples, uh, I was thinking, what a great example, you know? And I was reminded of a story that I heard of this was of a, an English bishop who uh, was, he was serving in a parish for a while. And uh, he, um, there was a, a, a person who was sick and they needed, they didn't have family. So uh, he was looking for people to help. And so he, he it came up. Uh, to this woman and he said would you be able to do anything and the woman said well no I don't think so um, and then of course the next day she got to feeling guilty <laughs> so she went over to the house where that person was and knocked on the door and the bishop opened the door here he was doing what he uh, had asked her to do and uh, I think that's probably the right attitude. Right on. Exactly the right attitude that, uh, that Jesus wanted. He was talking about servanthood. And um, it's, not, it's easy to, you know, to, to try to rise above, but that's not exactly what he wants. Um, another interesting point in the TikTok wars that go on, I listen to, particularly I'll have a bunch of difficult ones, and um, there's this, is he God, is he what, is he a great man, what, who is Jesus, and um, the, the atheists like to point out that nowhere does Jesus really say he's God in any of the scriptures. However, a, a clear reading of the scriptures, you can you can understand that he was God from some of the things that happened, or um, you can understand that he was a great man like Moses. Um, either of those things are possible in the in the moment of belief. Now, most of us walk around in life every day, and we're probably basically functioning. Um, <laughs> agnostics uh, our, you know our, our faith isn't really engaging us until something comes along and gets our attention and then <laughs> we kind of fall back on whatever it is we have and it livens up it 
you know, it, uh, and of course, uh, those people who are, who are oppressed, they often have a, a much clearer view of God's presence in their life than we do. Um, um, but, that doesn't mean that God isn't present. That doesn't mean we don't have faith because it just isn't functioning right this minute. Um, it's there, you know, if we when we need it. Um, so I think this particular day, Monday, Thursday, the day that we celebrate the the beginning of the the sort of the ceremonial start of the we call it Last Supper or the Eucharist for us. Um, that that begins with servanthood, and it begins with um, an almost timid but intimate offer of oneself. Jesus offers himself. He just offers himself. First, he shows it by washing feet. And then he offers it as he blesses and passes the bread, and as he blesses and offers the cup. Um, that's what we celebrate today, yeah. especially the formalization, I guess you would say. Now, a couple things about that formalization. Um, when we say the Sanctus, holy, 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 when we're doing the prayer of consecration. It is, first of all, it's a re referral back to, to Isaiah, when Isaiah is in the temple and he hears the angels singing, holy, holy, holy. Um, it's, a, it's a holy moment. It's a mysterious moment. We are singing literally to the salvation that is on the altar itself. Um, being, uh, it is in not chronological time as much as it is in chirotic time. Chirotic time means, um, well, good example in today's society, is people who have been sexually abused. When they talk about their sexual abuse, they're back in that moment. That's a chirotic moment for them. They remember it as it happened. Now that's a bad example, but there are good things that happen too, and the Eucharist is one of those good things that happen. In the midst of his going to his execution, he offers himself. And we praise that mystery with the Sanctus, and then there are a bunch of things that happen in that prayer. You probably don't even notice it most of the time because you're used to it. First, we raise up the elements and ask specifically for blessing of the bread and the wine as body and blood. We also call down the Spirit into these, into these objects of our worship. We see them as bread and wine, but they are spiritually something else. Now, if you, if you're uh, scientifically oriented and you want to go and see whether the structure of the bread and the wine has changed to body and blood, uh, I'm sure you'll be disappointed by that. <laughs> because um, it's unnoticed by the readers of John often that he is not really, he just doesn't like literalism very much. You know, I mean, you got Nicodemus comes in, he says, uh, how can I go back into the womb and be born again? Remember, everybody who says they're born again is actually taking the wrong definition. The right definition is born from above. Right. But the same word means born again, too. And so, if you're evangelical, you'll say you've been born again. <laughs> no, you've been born from above, baby dogs. Let's get that one right. Um, 
But the Eucharist is then, we ask for the Holy Spirit to be a part of that. We ask for our own unity in that experience. And we praise God at the end. And then we say Jesus' words, his, the Lord's Prayer, which finishes out the, the, the consecration is over at the great amen at the end of the consecration. But, you know, the priest has been the one doing all the work there, or the noise anyway. And then we say, we add our own noise to that. That's the Eucharist. And it means so many different things in one's life. I mean, I think of 78 years of, of well, we hardly ever did it when I was a kid. Once a month we would have communion. And then it was those dread words, let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. And you knew you were going to be on your knees for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was not, as an adolescent, that was not a thrilling thing. But the, the meaning of it has changed for me so often with my changing role, but also with people I'm there giving communion to. You know, I would love to take communion to Charles and Sarah Gay. They won't let me because I think to do that would be admitting that life has moved on. Yeah. Um, I'm hopeful that they will relent soon. Um, I pray that because they are part of our life. <laughs> and, and we would like them to be remain part of that life. And part of that gathering and being uni unified is by that experience of the mystery of salvation on the altar. Okay. Any questions about any of that? No? I think this was a this was a good idea. Oh well, thank you. I I well, I I was thinking and thinking and thinking, and then I thought of this, and I thought, well, you know, that's kind of an Easter thing. Well, it's not only a hospitality thing, but it's a life-giving thing. The plants are alive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hopefully. 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 <laughs> <So, yeah. laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, so okay. Well. Let's, we don't have to do anything but the prayers and then Eucharist from here on out, so we don't have to get to them. Um, so, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. And I'll include the prayers in the prayer of consecration. So We won't even do the prayers in their full form. Um, but don't tell anybody. All right. Uh, what page? Good question. Uh, I think we're going to do prayer C, uh, which is, uh, let me see. I know, I know. What is with this guy? Plants and then prayer C. Mm, okay, 369, page 369. 369, 369, 369 yeah. Uh, oh, but before we do that, I'm going to, um, okay, um, yeah, uh, before we do 369, let's do 169 in the hymnal, we'll just do, uh, one verse, um, One sixty nine. Oh, sacred head, sore wounded, defiled and put to scorn. Oh, kingly head, surrounded with mocking crown of thorn. What sorrows mars thy grandeur? Can death thy bloom deflower? O countenance whose splendor 
the hosts of heaven adore. I think that's all we need to do with that. <laughs> Not an easy one. Okay. Um, let me set it up and just take a moment. And uh... matter of fact, why don't you just all come up around here? Bring your prayer book because you'll need it. There are responses that you're supposed to make. Hey. Take no, no, with that, you're not stuck in consecrated. Come on in, come on in. Oh, in. We're in, in. We're surrounding the altar. Um, matter of fact, you can put that right here. The, the stuff. And, uh, okay, all right. Um, and John, if you need to sit, you can take one of the chairs. I don't need to sit. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm just making sure <laughs> that goes for anybody. Right. You know, if you're feeling tired of sitting, sit. You know, let's not. Uh, let's. Oh my goodness. I have to put the holy poncho on. C369. The Lord be with you. And yes. also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him thanks, thanks and praise. Okay. We'll wait. Okay. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By, By your will, will, they were created and have their being. being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have, Have mercy, mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. Therefore we praise you, joining, our, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with all those in every generation who look to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in, in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. This is the Holy Spirit calling upon the gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for the people the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was handed over, uh, the night he was betrayed, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. All right. Um, after supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Uh, whenever you drink it, do this.
for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our forebears, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. We remember especially those for whom we say our prayer, we mention especially um, Sarah Gann Charles, Glenda, we remember those who have died, Martha, Joseph, Debbie, Barbara, Larry, we remember those things for which we are thankful for spring. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the, the peace. peace. Coming soon. Easter Day. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Maybe I should turn my voice off again. <laughs> no, no, no. If we're all saying it in our heads. <laughs> you just happen to say it for us. Okay. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And I think what we'll do is pass. No, first, hard to overlook and pass. It is. It is. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Amen. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. If you would pour in that person, and then we'll I'll drink mine. And... Yeah, good idea. And then, um, and then just pass it along. <laughs> um, Be generous there; they overfill. Mm -hmm. yeah. We forgot to check it. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think about it. Well, I checked it, but I thought, well, well that'll be all right. Oh, so, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> too much, John? John, John's going to float. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. Come on, Paul. Oh. oh, what? The cork's still in there? No, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Moisture did. Oh, I see. Sure. Okay. All right. So.
go back a few pages to uh, the closing prayer. Yeah. I need that, but everything else you can. Okay. Um, you have a, a thing to roll us up on? You have a thing to roll us? Uh, no, we fold it. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll grab it as soon as they get, as soon as they get the candles out.
this is uh, hey, hey, hey. this is called now the altar of repose, <laughs> meaning that um, Jesus is in the tomb. Yeah. The, uh, man. Officially goes to. Yes. Yep. Okay, hang on a second. I'll. If you want to get your camera off. We're not. Why not yet? We will in a minute. Oh, that's our little lead. Drop it. I'm not going out of it. <laughs> Are you going to lock up? Eventually, yes. Yeah. It'll be a few right minutes from now. Dale, I'm going to have you do this. I'll get that. I too. can't. I well, know where I can't reach you. Do we need to take a reserve back in the back room? Father, you want the reserve back in the back room? Or are you going to leave the reserve? Leave it right there. Okay, get those other. I got that one bag that, that those four or five wafers, oh. and just put them in as re the reserve with that. Well, it was nice. Maybe I'm going to try to go by Sergey and Charles's house. Take them communion, which they won't take probably, but um, but I can take them a plant. Maybe that doesn't look too bad. That's gonna go. Look at that. Uh, did you bring that? Oh, yeah. you brought up the. Oh, he took them. Uh huh. Somebody taken the reserve. Oh, I saw oh, that. Oh, you already got them in there. Okay. Mm. You, you brought up the cross, right? Yes, the cross is up. All we gotta do is bring it out here. Oh, right across the front of the altar. This altar you got, huh? Yeah, it just goes across the front of the altar.
Yeah, just lean it in. Or put it into one of those little sections right there and let it sit right like that. Absolutely perfect. Well, you know what the. Well, we can take Easter Sunday out. Yeah, but I think we have. Yeah, we've got good. We've got good Friday. I know we've got it in there. Over just they put that, yeah, yeah there he is. Yeah, he probably already left. Okay, all right, you do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll catch up to him where he's walking. Okay. <laughs>